na, na. Oh, <laughs> Ron, you picked the wrong person. There you go. No, I did it right. Oh, you did it right. I, Nick, not, forgot yourself. It's not my show. It's not my you show. Forgot yourself. Very humble. Very humble. Hi, everybody. Hope you're doing well. It's, I mean, it's the 28th of June. It's the end of Q4. Uh, we're at 2 p.m. Mountain Time. We've got Rod Trent, Mountain Brody time. Castle, and Nicholas Madsen. Am I saying that correctly? Yeah, as good as it gets. <laughs> as as it gets. All right, cool. Not enough to get mad at me. Love it. No. Well, uh, thanks for everybody for joining us today. Rod, how are you doing? We'll introduce Nicholas in just a second. Yeah, I'll introduce Nicholas here in a minute. Um, I'm doing. Oh, you made me think about it. I, I had an answer for that earlier. I just totally <laughs> forgot. Um, no, uh, no, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I feel like though, because I, I just got back from a run a little bit ago, and I was discussing this with other people. I feel like. Ohio, where I live, is under attack from Canada. From Canada. Yeah. It's just, I saw the smoke. So we, firesmoke.ca is a great yeah. map to see the projected smoke. And I was like, oh, man, the U.S. is getting blasted by The past Canada. two days, right? I, yeah. I went outside for a run, and I, I thought, what the? Yeah, it's just the yeah. craziest thing. It's yeah. okay in the West here. So I'm in Alberta, and and uh, we, we must have hired the entire globes worth of firefighters because we had south africans we had yeah. french from france we had folks from australia money 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 uh and, and most of them are out um but in quebec and ontario is where the major fires are in the east now now help and, me with yeah, this just, this is not controlled right this is something that's just wildfire out of correct. control and they're yeah. trying to yeah and i'm no expert right but like you know over over time the earlier decades past you know i think i think there was um um, an over uh, abundance of of managing fires, mm -hmm. um, and you need fires to happen, right? You need fires to happen because you need old growth to be disposed of. You need new growth to come in, um, and it's in in the past. I think um, managing fires was something we felt like we you had to do more than maybe what was necessary. And what happens is that builds up over time, and now a whole bunch of fire needs to happen. Just needs to happen all at once. But um, it's kind of rare for both the western half and the eastern half of the country to have these these amount of fires this early in the year spring especially mm -hmm. um so i'm not going to get into a climate change uh rant or anything but uh but uh you know it, it sucks and uh, hopefully well, my climate has changed thank you so yeah <laughs> my, yeah it's it sure has i mean yeah. uh it, well because you know weeks ago it was the folks in new york state were like what's going on i mean the weeks previous it was our end of the continent and now you're seeing it uh so was it like Mars today? Like, was it really bad where you live? No, nah, it wasn't uh, really bad. I, I okay. still, I, I had to go out and run. I've, I have some uh, stuff I, I'm thinking about uh, some for next fiscal year and stuff like that. So I, I uh, every, every time I have a brain block, I have to go run to kind of think it out. And, and it works great. But Good. yeah, it was a little hazy. It wasn't bad. I felt fine after okay. getting back. I, I, of course, I passed that only a couple of times. So it was fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> So there's that. Uh, okay. I mentioned last week, and I can actually say it officially now, that did sign the contract on Monday that, yes, myself, Matt Zorch, and uh, another individual, we are co-writing the Definitive Guide to KQL. What's the full name? It's kind of silly. The Definitive Guide to KQL, Using Custo Query Language for Operations Defending and Threat Hunting for MS Press. That's just like the longest. It, it's like the old wow. days of Microsoft branding. Let's just put as, in as many words as we can just to confuse people. It's, yeah. And this is going to, that, that title fits on a book? That is the book. Yeah, it's done. <laughs> that's crazy. Okay. Yeah. That's a big title, man. Are you going to acronym that? Is it like Uh Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, well, congratulations. If I acronymed it, it'd sound like some kind of Biden speech, but... Um, <laughs> Um, yeah um so there's that, that. also that for yes, those that but... are just listening and not watching you need to come back and watch the video so, join us live sometimes because yeah have join us live that, yeah super fun i received this this week it's my Custo detective agency t-shirt i won Beautiful. when i didn't really want win. i actually had to do something for it got a shirt for the detective agency this past time i was actually quick enough to get on there and get it finished so that's pretty cool I do need to mention before we, before I ask you, Brody, what you did this week, and then we jump in and introduce our guest co-host. Yes. Uh, Brody, you mentioned early on that this is the end of Microsoft fiscal year, right? As of Friday, 
all things come to come to the end. Uh, next week is the first week of the new fiscal year, which means what? Panic. No, no, just kidding. <laughs> uh, it means a whole bunch of leadership meetings uh, to set the stage for what we're going to be focused on as an organization. Well, I think that's I think yeah. that's done already. But um, yeah, okay. <laughs> but everybody disappears, and in, yes, and yes. we're the same. So next week, I'm actually taking the week off, oh, which means and, and we because of the fiscal year end, and also because of July Fourth, the U.S. holiday, we will have no show next week. Oh, people! Yeah, I guess so. Hey, right? Uh, yeah, because Canada Day, which I'm sure you don't care about, is Saturday, but July hopefully, 4th is Tuesday. Hopefully, all of Canada just takes a day off to clean up the fires. If it's <laughs> um, if it's Canada Day, you you might be getting more smoke coming south. Just yeah, probably, there. probably yeah, or, all the yeah. barbecue, back bacon, and stuff like that. Yes, the barbecue is what I was referring to. Yes, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, good stuff, Rod. Uh, where are you going? Me? You. Uh, I'm, not going, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, well, the wife has okay. some things planned out. I think we're going hiking and stuff. Nothing nothing official. We're not actually going anywhere. It's a staycation. Cool. It's just I'm going to try my darndest not to work for one week because I'm not even delivering the newsletters next week, by the way. I I would like to see you disconnect for a whole week and, and actually Can't disconnect. Can't do it. Can't Come on, Rob. Come, Come on. on. Throughout my entire career, I've never been able to accomplish that. People say, talk about this work-life balance. That is my work-life balance. I, I enjoy it. Yeah. I'm totally opposite. Out of office, party on. See you later. I'm gone. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> so, Brody, what happened? What, what did you do this week? Uh, it is midweek. You've only had two days to actually do anything, but yeah. I do stuff. I, I work, Rod. Thanks okay. for asking. Um, you know, actually, you know, what's interesting is uh, I'm not really feeling well this week. Got a stomach thing going on. So that kind of sucks. So if I slur my words or I sound like uh, Biden, to your point, Rod, you'll know why I'm kind of working on four hours of sleep every day this week. But I digress. Um, something interesting I've been working at, you know, working with the defense industry is interesting. I get questions like, Brody, how do we multi-factor or two-factor authenticate when individuals can't bring phones into a secure environment. I'm like, okay, well, maybe like a physical token or biometrics. Yeah, but Brody, what if um, those individuals have wounds, battle wounds, or they're in a, um, a, a hazardous environment where they can't take off their glove or, or, or a mask? I'm like, well, actually, these are interesting use cases that you're bringing up, you know? Um, and I, I don't know what the answers are yet. I'm still working through them with these individuals. It's a lot different than working with like a financial institution in terms of how they 2FA, right? Uh, things of that nature. So we're doing a whole zero trust thing with the defense industry and uh, it, I'm learning a lot. Uh, we're gonna start looking at personas. We're gonna start um, you know, finding out how each individual like works within those environments. And it's a, it's a, fun, it's a fun change up. It's a fun change up from what I normally do. Um, and then we're also uh, working with an education institution in, in the, the U.S. and I'm leading a project there as my good friend Charles, who I hope watches and listens to the show. Hi, um, Charles. Hi, Charles. He's leaving. He's leaving for uh, for greener pastures, and he's awesome. <laughs> I wish him the best. And uh, he's handing over the reins to me. So, Charles, I'll try not to screw it up while you're gone. Um, wow. And then, other than that, on the community side, we're planning for FY24 worldwide security community efforts, Americas and Latin America efforts as well. Um, internally at Microsoft, we've got a pretty robust uh, connected community organization across security and compliance and identity and all these other one, artificial intelligence, right? Uh, uh, defense and intelligence, all, all kinds of stuff. And so we're we're trying to plan and, and bring good content and bring people together internally at Microsoft so that we can learn from one another and kick ass and chew bubble gum. That's kind of that's kind of. It's the plan. always it's about always learning, right? Yeah, always learning. Yeah, you got it. Well, and, and it's it's hard to learn when you tell everybody you know everything. So, <laughs> yeah, drop the ego for sure. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. Don't have an ego. Just just have an open mind. Have a growth mindset. Yeah. So so we we do have a special co-host this week. So was it last week or a couple weeks ago? We had our first guest co-host, Brody. Do you remember? A couple weeks. A couple like, weeks. Two right? or three. Yeah. I love this, and I think everybody else does too. So internally at Microsoft, for those that don't know. You've heard this before if you've watched the show, but if you don't know, it means you haven't watched the show and you know, <laughs> you need to watch it more. But 
internally, we have what's called a private preview program. Actually, now it's called the customer connection program, which gives our customers the ability to try out our features, services before they go GA or go to public preview. We have so many awesome customers and, and they're just so highly engaged and active in this program. Part of this, uh, I don't know exactly how it works. I think there's points given for certain, I don't know how the, even the points are measured or anything like that, but there is a way to get awards or rewards for your efforts for being a strong community member within that community. Uh, so we've had a few and we have actually a few more also scheduled coming up as well. For what we call CCP black belts, right? So they've attained this black belt status. And as part of that award, they, for whatever reason, I don't get it. I wouldn't do it. Uh, they've chosen this show. <laughs> as their reward. So I want to welcome Nicholas Madsen. Um, thank you, sir. Congratulations. Thank you for your service in the private <laughs> preview program. Yeah. yeah. And um, I want to say this, I don't want to embarrass you too much, but um, Brody's obviously not felt very well, but Nicholas today had his wisdom teeth taken out and he's yeah. still here on the show. I don't know where Edward's at, but Nicholas is Nicholas, here. You're a trooper, yeah. bud. Welcome. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. So yeah, if I lisp a little bit, then uh, you know why. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just just talk okay. out of the other side of your mouth. Yeah. Right yeah. I'm trying to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, how how was that? So I mentioned this when he mentioned it earlier. I I mentioned this. I I just suffered through it. All of my wisdom teeth actually grew in, and I have my wisdom teeth. I don't. Ooh. I always thought about that. You know, if these things are like built into grow in your mouth eventually you need them for something and they're called wisdom teeth i'm thinking by the time you're like 80 85 90 years old you need these to chew steak other than just <laughs> drink pudding right so i'm thinking i'm going to be i'm going to still be eating steak when you guys are eating porridge yeah. we will uh, put put it in the blender and then uh... right right mush it up a slurry yeah. smoothie a well rod i was steak wondering shape. Maybe that's why you had all those gray hairs because you're so wise because of all their wisdom teeth that you have in your mouth. So. Yeah, that could be it too. Yeah, okay. um, I don't think yeah. so, but it could be. I'm, that's not. I'm just getting rid of my ego. I'm like, ah, yeah, I'm learning. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, sweet. Well, so Nick, Nicholas, other than that, what did you do this week? Uh, uh, what do you do as your daily location? So first of all, I'm located in uh, Copenhagen in Denmark, in Europe. So it's uh, it's a little bit late now, but that's fine. Uh, I work in Accenture. Maybe you know it, maybe you don't, but it's Pretty one much. of uh, yeah, your biggest yeah. partners. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I sit in our cloud and infrastructure security entity. Um, yeah, primarily with the Azure and Windows infrastructure security. Awesome. Nice. Nice. That's fun. So we got a ton of great experience. What have you that you can talk about? What have you participated? What what has what have you done within this CCP and the customer connection program? Um how have you attained this award? I have been very active with uh, primarily the Defender for Cloud suite. So okay. uh, all the new yeah, features that you see coming up now with the uh, Defender CSPM, uh, yeah, storage version two, all these things that are now oh. generally available, right? Um, yeah. And then we have a lot of interesting things coming up that are private preview. So if you're not yet part right. of this uh, community, I encourage everyone to join it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I was looking at the, there's a short URL. I have to look at that up and supply that in the show notes. It's really easy to sign up, right? Um, mm -hmm. There's some requirements, obviously, but it's, it's really easy to sign up and anyone can participate in this. And it's super awesome. Yeah. Um, customers like you, Nicholas, customers like you, Nicholas, you're the reason why our products are the way they are today. All of our, all of our products are customer vetted and customer driven. So it's super awesome. Yeah, exactly. No, I was was just about to say that you really get like a yeah a direct line to the product group. So this is really your way to influence the products before they they come out. Um, yeah, to the masses. So 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 who's your? I'm gonna put you on the spot. Who is your favorite private preview PM? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hmm. I actually, honestly, I don't know because I talk to a lot of different people. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you're not trying to throw any. I I appreciate. It. No. Don't throw anyone. Yeah, I mean, 
who, who don't you like? Working. Yeah, who don't like? Oh, that's a yeah. that's a tough one, right? Especially being live here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rob, be nice. Be nice. Yeah, what's more code? We, we don't really need the answer. I think we know already. Yeah, yeah. I have no. Yeah. Idea. The, yeah, the product managers who do not listen to my feature requests. <laughs> right. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Well, so, obviously, nice. someone is listening to you because you were able to get this award and, and I appreciate it. I congr you know, it's congratulations. That's a super thing. That's super awesome. We truly appreciate that. So great. Yeah. I think it's a great program. I, I think uh, it might be time unless we have anything else to share to introduce probably. And, and I've said this a couple of times and I'm going to go on record of saying this as well. It's the hardest working MVP in the MVP program. <laughs> All right, so I want to introduce Morton. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if I'm the hardest working, but uh, I really appreciate you saying that. So, uh, and congratulations on your book. That's a really a cool announcement that you just uh, made there. Even everybody though, says uh, congratulations, but so early on in my career, I wrote a lot of books, and, and I gave them up because it's a lot of effort for very little return, and it just I'm like, oh my goodness. So now when people say congratulations on this book, I'm like, you don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Condolences. Yeah, there, there you go, go Nick. Yeah. <laughs> but this no, one, uh, this one fine. was so important to me. It's just something I couldn't pass up. So I'm just like, I'll just, I'll suffer through it this time. But With if the they title ask that again, long? it's a flat yeah. no. Huh? With the title that long? I mean, you, gotta, yeah. you can't turn that down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was chat GPT right there. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. Well, so my name is Morten, and uh, I'm also calling in from Denmark. So actually, uh, we are uh, two Danes here tonight, and uh, I'm really happy that you're also here, Niklas, uh, and especially with your dedication in the CCP program. Uh, actually, I have also been part of it for the last two years, and I try to encourage everyone that I meet and that have some extra spare time to to participate, so uh, it's uh, it's really cool, and uh, you get to uh, know a lot of people, and get to know and try the product, give some feedback, and I really love the way that Microsoft really listens to it. So you know, thinking of the size of the company, and you can actually kind of do a small impact on it, and then bring back the feedback from your own experience and also from your customers and. Uh, and you can see how they work with the, feed, the feedback and uh, it's really, really good. And uh, I really love it. So uh, I really encourage everyone else to, uh, to join. So I hope you can bring the link in, uh, Rod, in the, in the yep. show. Uh, it's really cool. That, uh, Void, uh, Void actually supplied yeah. that. He be, this good. individual beat me to it. So I'm going to have to use yeah. that the show notes a little bit later. But that, there it is, aka.ms slash join CCP. You know, you would think that I would remember something like that. It's just so easy. Right. It's not a Rod Trent link, so it's probably why you don't memorize it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> My ego links. Yeah. yeah. No points for you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Rod. Sorry, Rod. Who yeah. else do we have here? Uh, Nick? Do well, I, I think this is a surprise. I think people are going to love this. If they knew that this individual was going to be here, maybe that's why we had so many people sign up, <laughs> pre register for LinkedIn. Suddenly popular. Yeah. Hey, yeah, so I'm Nick Keast, uh, Principal PM for Data Collection Rules, also for Diagnostic Settings and Platform Logging. Um, but yeah, in the Azure Monitors team and been working with Morton and the awesome stuff he's doing uh, and working with a lot of other customers. And we're trying to grow what we can do with Azure Monitor to do everything <laughs> that you need. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's super awesome. DCRs, data collection rules. I think anyone that's worked with Sentinel in particular, right? So all the folks that I know, um, these are super important, super helpful, super valuable. Uh, I think with the XPath and stuff, a lot of people are having to relearn a couple things, but yeah, super powerful. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, thank you very much, uh, Nick, for joining here. I really appreciate it. So. Uh... I'm a, I, I ask Nick to join here because I'm really uh, passionate about logging. And uh, over the last, uh, I would say, uh, six uh, months or so, I've been working very hard uh, on building uh, an extra 
you can say glue to some of the standard products uh, and features uh, coming out uh, from the pipeline team and the DCR team and uh, working especially on the next generation of uh, log analytics. Uh, I call it log analytics version two. So it's uh, kind of the replacement of what we have today. Uh, so, and I'm working both on the AMA, uh, you know, side of it uh, with the Azure Monitor team, uh, testing a lot of the new stuff and uh, giving back feedbacks and stuff like that. And lastly, I've been working on the API side. So we have an, you know, replacement of the current HTTP data collector API, uh, which is called Log Ingest and API which includes, you know, DCR, data collection endpoint DCE, and, uh, and also, you know, the uh, new uh, log analytics table. And uh, so I've built a module that, that helps uh, customers to, to make that transition. So, and uh, that's something that uh, I hope that also we, if interested, we can touch on today. Uh, I, I think it's really cool and, uh, and uh, getting a lot of big momentum out there. So that's really cool. Yeah, so this PowerShell module in particular, I think we want to kind of highlight that for just a sec. Because um, Yeah. How long has that been? When, when did you release that? It's been, I don't know, a few yeah. weeks. Yeah, well, I released it in uh, April 15th, I think, <laughs> uh, just around MVP Summit timeframe. And, uh, and as of now, I think it, the last time I checked, uh, it has been downloaded 61,000 times. Yeah, that's and, pretty uh, awesome. So it's, that, was, uh, that was all by one person. Yeah, I, I said it. <laughs> yeah right. It's, yeah. My, uh, it's yeah. my robot that does it. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody kept right downloading it and they forget where they put it. Ah, yeah, dang it. that's right. <laughs> yeah. the parentheses one, again. parentheses two. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> no, but that's super awesome. Well, and, and I mean, that's just kind of, I guess, um, it's an indication that it's necessary, right? Uh, everybody needs help with that. You know, I work with Sentinel. I know that a lot of other people work with other services and things that use Azure Monitor and log analytics and, and that data ingestion is is key. So what, what mm -hmm. what's different about this API, this log ingestion <clears throat> uh, collector? So I would I would say that the uh, the way that we did things in the old days uh, it was uh, kind of uh, easy. We just send in some data uh, and it would automatically create the, the table and the uh, columns and the naming and it was kind of uh, you didn't have to do much of it because it didn't a lot of the things and uh, and you can say that was an advantage uh, but today the potential with this uh, new way of thinking where you have the uh, where you send the data into a pipeline and you have a, a dcr uh, that can handle uh, things uh, think of it as you can right now send data into log analytics, but uh, maybe in the future, we would see that we can send data to multiple streams of, of things. Uh, so, and, uh, and we can now also manipulate with the data uh, in the pipeline so that we can, for example, add data, we can remove data before it actually hits the, the destination and the log analytics uh, table. So we have a lot of cool things that we can do with the data. And, but it's also a little challenging because you have to define the schema and you have to ensure that the tables and the DCR are created and uh, you have to deal with you know, new properties and stuff like that. So that is where my module comes into play. So that's the short version of it. So, so if you don't define the schema and the table and stuff like that. Is there a default, I guess? Uh, with DCRs, we need you to give us that schema of what's coming in. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, we're going to drop the data. Um, and this is actually a safety measure. This is to make sure we, we had customers accidentally grab the wrong file. 
and boom, they just gain 300 extra columns. <laughs> yeah. And undoing yeah. that is a real pain. And actually, it even can cause repercussions on the back end for everyone. Right. Um, so we moved from a dynamic schema management that just kind of took care of it for you to a more explicit model. And initially, it's more work. But because it's explicit, now people like Morton have built really awesome tools that give you choices about how you're going to handle that schema. So he has different modes that take the initial schema and then don't modify it any further versus look at new fields popping up and adding them um, and able to give you errors when those things are occurring. So we're handing control over to the user and then control over to these scripts where previously you had no control. It was just the server did what the server did. Right, um, right. So yeah. DCR, you know, it does up the complexity a bit, but we're giving you so many powerful knobs to Ooh. build on. And we're trying to build everything on core Azure primitives as, yeah. you know, ARM resources that you can use with Bicep or anything like that. You can use Terraform, uh, build that out. And then that you can question, by the way. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. like we, we, wherever possible, we are trying to snap to a standard. Yeah. Uh, Open or Microsoft, we're trying to not create something new here. We're going, right. great, someone already did it. We're going to go that way. So we're going to use AAD auth. We're going to use MSI. Like all of these things, just pick the something that's already known and solved. Um, but yeah, like now, I mean, you know, Rod, like in the end, KQL is a typed uh, query language. It's a typed, Kusto is a typed database system. Like, you having those types allows you to do more. And before, when you it got data into the ingestion path, it just kind of guessed. It didn't know. Now we're asking you, give us the type, because with the type, we can do better expressions, more Ooh. powerful things. Right. Um, yeah. Cool. Cool. If, um, if you're like me and data collection rules are uh, not your primary skill set or something that's somewhat new to you, um, when you're talking to security operations individuals, uh, folks working working in the field, defenders, uh, what's the what's the what's the selling point? What's the value proposition for incorporating these if you've never looked at this before? Yeah, um, I think we bring two things together that we didn't fully have before. One is reusability that you compared to some other systems that we've had, you don't define it per individual machine or individual data source um, and deploy it individually to each one. Instead, you set a data collection rule and you associate it with a lot of things. That allows for you to quickly change a rule and for 5,000 VMs, five minutes later, to start changing, collecting something different. Um, so that scalability and reusability is one. The second, and these are the powers like, you guys have only seen the beginning of DCR. <laughs> um, Version one. <laughs> like the, the KQL transforms that you're starting to play with, That's that was an idea from the very beginning, but it took us some time to get there. Um, with that, I think we originally described DCR as, I, I wouldn't literally say it's ETL, but it is very much, think of it like ETL, of extract, transform, load. Uh, pick what data you want to grab, say what you want to do to it, and then say where you want to put it. And that's what a data collection rule is. We have our data sources, we have our destinations, and then we have our data flows, which I view as kind of a switchboard to map between those things. That was the original version. Oh, okay, there's a data source, there's a destination, we've mapped it. But now we have not just simple wires, you can hook those wires up to some effects board. <laughs> <laughs> that can modify the data as it comes through and go, okay, let's put it into that cool some mixer there and do some KQL on it and then spit it out in a different way. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Interesting. Yeah, that, that, that's awesome. So that to me, I'm just thinking in my mind while you're describing that, that's, that's super cool because now those sources of data that you should just kind of filter into whatever table we decided it should go into. Now customers can kind of create their own table and create their own detection rules around that specific thing, which makes it much more easy to track that specific thing for that specific event, which I think is pretty cool. Mm. The other piece of that, yeah, go ahead, sorry. One source also doesn't have to be one table. <clears throat> right, right. So you can have some appliance spitting out syslog, but in reality, you know that there's different things in there. 
and you want to grab based on some property and put in a different table so you can just execute something on that one table for that one type of data coming out. Yeah, so we also, and I think most people know this, but we have ASIM, right? So our advanced security information model for Microsoft Sentinel, where it will go out and it's intelligent enough to look through that syslog or whatever it happens to be for all that extra junk and just pull out the DNS stuff. So we can kind of use the KQL behind the ASIM to maybe will it, I guess, filter it into those tables where it needs to be potentially. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of that Sentinel stuff's built right on. Uh, DCR directly. Some of it's even built on the, the primitives that we're using to build out DCR. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But it's obvious that, for example, you can, uh, for compliance reasons, for example, if you have a column of data where you want to remove the data uh, because it conflicts with some kind of compliance uh, regulation, then we can take that data out or we can take specific rows of data, uh, for example, if it contains uh, a specific event ID, if we don't want to see that, uh, we can cut that out uh, before it hits the log analytics. So if you are certain about uh, the transformations that you, you apply to it, you can also use it for cost reduction as an example. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, so even you can add or merge data, you can also uh, remove data. Uh, so. And, and also data masking as well, right? Because that's yeah. that's kind of a key thing customers yeah. are always asking about, right? Yeah, yeah. Cost yeah. Or compliance. Like yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> oh boy. Hey, guess who's here? Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's Defender X. Defender X coming from the golf course or what? I can't he hear can't us. hear us. We can just no. smack talk him. He's still having audio issues. Better late than Brody. All right. Tonight. So just so for those listening, Edward is here. But everybody stop what you you're can't doing. hear us. So everybody scream at one. <laughs> no, super awesome. Um, so more Nicholas, did you have any questions? No, I uh, I had a little chat with the uh, with Morton earlier today. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and now we, we so he answered your all your questions. Why didn't yeah. you do that for me? Yeah, you gotta save it for the show, Nicholas. Yeah, yeah. I, know, sure. I know. Morton, you should have just said, Hey, wait for the show. No, the show. Uh, I now I said I, I could help him if you want to play with it, uh, uh, with it, testing it out. So, uh, so I think it's uh, it's really cool what you can do with with these things. Uh, if you uh, think uh, it, it doesn't need, necessarily need to be, you know, pulling in, uh, you know, security data. It can be any types of data that you want to. So I, that's why I call it kind of in quote any connector because I can you know, pull data in or I can push data up. Uh, so for example, I have built a free uh, solution, which I which I call a client inspector. You can download it on my GitHub. And uh, it's an example of how you can uh, send this script out to all your clients and it will bring back uh, tons of data from your clients uh, every single day and it will send it into log analytics using this new method. And then on top of that, I have provided 15 different dashboards where you can view these uh, different data. Um, and uh, so it's kind of just a, a showcase for this uh, new concept of log ingest and API, but it's actually also pretty useful uh, because you can see, for example, um, all the machines that do not have a BitLogger enabled or who is the member of the local admin group or, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the Defender AV configuration uh, and stuff like that. So it's just, you know, simple PowerShell bringing back data and, and you can actually use it in, in different ways. I have had uh, examples of customers that ask me, for example, I want to understand what local printers do we have on all our different 200 sites? Uh, do we need to send out a guy with a piece of paper to write down it, or can we bring back the data and use it for budgeting uh, as in the, uh, to, to, to buy new uh, large uh, printers uh, to replace that instead? Uh, and uh, you can you, you know, use it for many different purposes. Nice. That's awesome, Morton. Do you have something awesome. visual that you want to you want to share with everybody? Not to put any pressure, but if you have something <clears> ready, we'd be well, happy to. Yeah, I, I can uh, show a, a little thing about the the solution, but but it's 
it's it's kind of just a, a script, uh, but uh, I'll give it a. I'll, I'll try to sh uh, show it a little bit here. So I'll just share my screen. Okay. So let me just share my screen here. So so, so what I'm hearing while you're starting to share your screen is is yeah. all all of that complexity that Nick just talked about. You, you're yeah. trying you you eliminate it with your solution here. Yes. Not that uh, it's complex, Nick. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's not. Yeah. He's got the T-shirt, so nothing's complex for Rod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> so, so this is just uh, to wrap up. You know, the question that you just had before: what What are the advantages of this uh, new uh, things? And, and uh, we talked talked about it. Uh, you know, adding data, merging data. We can send it uh, to different places and stuff like that. So. Like I was saying, we also do have some challenges uh, dealing with this because we have to like uh, create the DCR on the table before this. We have to ensure that the DCE, the data collection endpoint, the schema must be defined. And, uh, and we also need to deal with um, adding, how, how do we deal with, for example, adding new properties uh, in the source object? Uh, I have two modes, like a merge mode and an override mode. Um, and uh, so these are some of the challenges. And uh, and you can see uh, the module here. It, it will, you can download it on the- uh, Are you sharing, by the way? Are you sharing? Let me just uh, see here. You should be, oh, here we go. Let me just see here. Yeah, go ahead and share it and I'll, I'll push it to the screen. It's not Teams, so it's confusing, I know. <laughs> Totally different. So let me just share my screen. I heard Ed. I heard Ed. There we go. Okay, here we go. Ready? There we go. Here we go. Do you see the screen now? Yes, sir. I see All your right. profile picture too. Yeah. <laughs> QR code? Does that, does that take us to uh, never going to give you up? Yeah, that, there's a lot of barcodes in here. So it will go directly to the uh, PowerShell gallery where oh, you can awesome. find the module. Uh, and uh, so that is in here, and uh, this is an example of one of the the people that uh, are using this. Uh, and uh, Ruben, uh, he's uh, from a large enterprise German uh, manufacturing company, and they have uh, into they are using the module inside their production and uh, using it for monitoring uh, their entire production. And uh, so he uh, found a great uh, value of it. So again, some of the things that we need to make sure that we deal with is, for example, the, um, the schema. So when you have uh, large uh, data objects, you have to, uh, to deal with the schema. And uh, that is part of both the DCR and also from the, uh, the log analytics table itself. So you can see here, you have a lot of columns, you have the types of data, and, and uh, that's some of it uh, that we have to deal with. And like I was saying before, we can pull data from any source and we can push data, uh, like for example, from an inventory, inventory base where we can send in the data. So. There are lots of ways where we can, uh, you know, use these different data. So this is just an, an example of running the script, uh, which is the inventory script part. And uh, so you can see it collects data using standard PowerShell, and then it sends the data up. But it also deals with uh, some of the uh, challenges. For example, uh, if uh, the naming of the uh, columns or the data are uh, prohibited or the length of the data is too long and uh, stuff like that. So it, it handles all these challenges uh, automatically by detecting these uh, challenges and making sure to adjust to this. Uh, so this is just the script that runs and sends in the data. Um, this is another example where I'm running this script and it will actually detect if the, uh, the table and the DCR exist. And if it does not exist, it, it will automatically uh, create uh, the, the, the table and the DCR and also uh, you know, add the, uh, the, the necessary schema. And, uh, and again, it will also work uh, by adding more properties to it. So, 
it, it handles all these things, and this is the verbose uh, mode where you can see what's going on here. So really this cool. is just a, a, a sneak preview of this uh, to, to, to give you some insight on this. <clears throat> That's awesome. Thank, I didn't yeah. know you'd have an entire deck ready, Morton. Uh, so yeah. excellent, excellent job, sir. Yeah, excellent job. Oh, I already broke it again. I keep breaking the, the screen view. <laughs> there we go. I'm bad with computers. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just great. I mean, it's great that you can demonstrate this. Yeah. So, Morton, my apologies for being late, friend. Uh, quick question for you. Yeah. What is what? Maybe you answered this uh, for our for our users, listeners who haven't. First of all, hello everyone. I'm in. Hi, I do exist. Hi, uh, we know you exist. Coming coming from the golf course or what? <laughs> Would you like uh, to introduce yourself? Yeah. So, uh, who are I'm, you? Uh, anyway, I'm Defender X. That's who I am. Okay, Expert okay. at defending. Uh, <laughs> so, hello Nicholas. Hello Nick. Hello Martin. I'm, my apologies. Martin, what is the minimum PowerShell version, module version, to be able to use your your tool? Does it check for that? Uh, it does. Uh, right now, it works on both uh, 5.1 and uh, and uh, and above. So it will run on, uh, on the majority of the versions that are out there. So it will automatically check the different uh, versions that are in there. And actually, actually I can just uh, show you how it works uh, if it will not be running this, because I have actually built a, a special module to deal with the uh, problem with two different scenarios. And one scenario is uh, for servers that do not have internet access. And the other scenario is for the ones which does not run uh, VMF uh, 5.1.1. Uh, so this is an example of an old uh, 2008 server where you can see that it will collect the data, but instead of sending it to the log analytics uh, table or the, the, the Azure workspace, it will send the data into a like a, a share path internally, where you can see the data is stored in a, in a JSON file. And then I have another module, which will look for, for files in here and it will handle the, uh, the data. So it, it will deal with, you know, uh, disconnected environments uh, or uh, environments where we are not running uh, the, the right uh, TLS version. Um, so. Mm -hmm. So as of now I'm going to start the lockup uh, engine and it will uh, now uh, detect the files and it will send the data into the log analytics uh, uh, workspace. So it will uh, come in uh, typically with a delay of 10, 15 uh, seconds. So this is just an, uh, an example of how I, I use it. And it's standard PowerShell. There's no other file in here. Mm -hmm. And Permissioning, you know, is there a permissioning check from the way that you're running this from the yeah. yeah, and and being able to write to that LAW, so it checks for that cross permission between the device. Yeah, so, so it it's uh, some of the the security of it is uh, actually tightened uh, much better uh, now. I'm just trying to cancel this here, and um, so. Uh, now everything is handled by uh, the um, there's an Azure app with a service principle uh, that that is only having the necessary permissions to send in the, the data. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have also introduced uh, the concept of having a like a reference computer. So if you have, for example, five thousand computers, you don't necessarily want uh, it to add new properties uh, from all these different uh, computers uh, in the schema. So we have, uh, the, I, I have the concept of having a reference machine where you run the script and it will only make changes to the schema when run from these uh, different machines. But on servers, uh, you can have uh, the same object which will be different depending on the OS version. So for example, 2012, 16, 19, the same command, for example, inside VMI uh, can have different uh, properties. And in that case, I want to uh, you know, merge these different uh, properties so that it will show all the data, even though the OS version is uh, different. Okay. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. So that's coming in with some smart questions. 
Not yeah. bad for someone who's rolling it off the golf course. It's so that, that, that's that's pretty awesome, Morton. What was your incentive to? Because this had to take many many hours, right? So what was yeah. your incentive to, incentive to actually do this? Um. Well, what I have done previously is that all my customers are having um, and uh, they have been using this client inspector and a server inspector script for for I think five six years. And on top of that, I provided dashboards uh, for free so that they can have a great insights to their infrastructure. So think of the dashboard as kind of desired configuration, which will show all machines that are deviating from our desired uh, infrastructure. Uh, and so all those uh, were built on the old version. So, you know, running an HTTP data collector and uh, also with an MMA version. And I wanted to transform it into using the latest and greatest uh, technology stack. And uh, so that was the, the uh, you can say, uh, the, the reason for, for doing this. And, um, all I, and, and secondly, I would also say that I have uh, seen uh, the power of this, and I wanted to help the community in, you know, doing this transition here. And uh, and right now, um, I was uh, we just added uh, two new articles uh, last week, uh, and you can actually find the, the articles uh, on inside the Azure Monitor um documentation and microsoft was kind enough uh, to uh, to uh, add my name in there as well and, but i also provided some scripts uh, in one of the articles so that so basically whatever i can do to help the community i would love to, to do that so this goes back to my original point when i introduced you and we brought you on screen <laughs> i don't think anyone um Everyone believes that you're the hardest working MVP in the MVP world. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yes. Thank you. Thank yes, you. He is. I right think the deck. A lot of a lot of great people out there working hard. So, but it's a lot of fun, and uh, I really enjoy it. And uh, and uh, I, I love to uh, to help the community and uh, spend time there and and uh, understand how we can do uh, things just a little bit better. Uh, and if I can impact that uh, I'll be more than happy to do that and and I also learned a lot and uh, and uh, and I have a, a lot of great ideas of new things that I want to implement inside this uh, for example like monitoring of this solution as an example uh, that's something that I have an idea about uh, looking into for the future but but uh, but uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, I think that a lot of ideas, I have also built a, another script uh, recently, which is introducing people to the Azure resource graph, uh, which I find is a very hidden uh, feature inside the Azure stack, but it helps me uh, with tons of great information when I do uh, scripting and automation. And, and, and that's just another example. Nice. Well, it, I think it must just be uh, great to have people like Morton here in the community yeah. contributing back. And then Nick, well, the same to you. I mean, you can draw upon these individuals and help your customers in your scenarios as well. Yeah, yeah. we're just Thank amazed you. in the product group, but watching Morton run through this, and yes. we've had a few meetings with him, gave him some feedback, and then two days later, he's like, "Cool, I've done all of this," and we're like, "Whoa!" <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, he's just doing really awesome stuff with this. We're, we're we, you know, explaining some of the background of why things work the way they do. And then he actually kind of made some adjustments to make it run a little safer, a little easier. Um, actually, I think the ARG kind of came up from that where we're like, hey, don't hammer arm if you don't have to, you'll actually get throttled. So yeah. if you can query this through ARG, that's safer. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Insider baseball. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, to, to go out to the Microsoft guys on the call, right? Martin, how have you Microsoft proof your solution? Meaning if they change something, either with the schema, deprecate something, does your tool go, what did they do now? And I now have to go back and look at it. Cause I know we're, we're changing something. Maybe you're on the inside, you're, you are the MVP. You need to put the word done from us. So maybe they call, <laughs> they call you for permission. Hey, we're gonna change this. This is okay. Nah. 
<laughs> I, I think I have a lot of customers uh, that will uh, that will tell me if something breaks. But uh, <laughs> oh, but, okay. uh, but uh, it, actually, when it comes to the schema, you mentioned the schema. I, I really don't care about changing the schema because uh, I'm actually uh, handling that by either doing an override. Uh, based on the the source object where data are coming from, or doing a merge, so mm -hmm. so it will deal with it. But but I think uh, in general, if new things are coming up, and I know th new things are coming, then uh, I will adjust to that uh, and release uh, an, an update. So as an example, I just released an update uh, twelve days ago, which will automate the migration of an existing uh, v1 table um, and and convert it into a dcr based table and i provided um, a video and uh, we also have a, an official documentation uh, where it will show so so you can decide upon either doing a migration of a table or uh, or you can do a side-by-side -side implementation where you are, you know, building a, a new table with a new DCR and new naming convention, and then you're adjusting your dashboards and testing things, and then you're doing the turnkey uh, of the solution. Or you can reuse the table and then introduce new naming convention um, and using transformations uh, and putting the data into the old structure using the, the new feature. So mm -hmm. you can use uh, either way, uh, and it's really cool. I've already thought of a couple of ways your tool can help me troubleshoot. I'm working with a customer and we're having some issues with the ServiceNow integration because they have a custom module inside of it. And so it's trying to write to to, they've made up the tables in their module and they're trying to write it here and it's not there. But maybe your tool can help troubleshoot that because they don't quite know which solution to use. The, the ServiceNow data connector or the solution in the content gallery, right? Mm -hmm. But we can't really tell. And then when we finally open up their modules, it just has so many columns of just like, do you actually need this information? Mm -hmm. But the way they're using it is with their non-Sentinel SIM they do so we're trying to map okay. it and I'm, I'm i'm working with the engineering group and everything we're scratching our heads but your tool give me an idea on how to figure that out now that's good that's good yeah i'm gonna try that okay so uh, yeah. nick and Morten, i actually have a question um as you might know a lot of customers might still be using scum um if that tells you anything and <laughs> i would like to know the back to the value proposition that, that you asked a little bit about rod um how do you see that? I mean, Scum versus uh, AMA going forward. Do you and Nick or should I? That's a talk? loaded question. All right. Yeah. Let's hear this one. I, well, let's, I, get, let's get some context to it before you go. I, Nick, I, um, I can talk uh, for hours about it. And I just did a presentation for a large company the other day about this. And, and it's, uh, it's something that, uh, you know, we, we need to... Uh, the, the story that we have right now is uh, is a little uh, problematic because if you look at the AMA and you have the uh, VM insights, we are lacking one thing, which is the uh, the management pack. Because basically, what we have today is that the capability of saying we have the green light and we have the, the red light uh, because we can. Uh, we get that data and you can actually use Azure Resource Graph today uh, and it will instantly show the state uh, of your machine. Uh, if you, for example, turn off the machine uh, or you, if something is wrong with it. Uh, but the problem here is the uh, management packs because we don't have that uh, inside Azure Monitor today. Um, last time when I was in the, in the, in uh, in Bellevue, uh, in, in Seattle, I, I actually had a meeting with the Azure Monitor team around if we could build something like that, like a SCOM management pack converter. I, I could think of, uh, you know, it could be really cool if we had that uh, feature. Why haven't and, you built that yet? <laughs> well, we actually have a, me and another guy, we were actually uh, talking about it. And I was recently in, in, uh, in India uh, talking with the SCOM uh, MI team as well. 
And, and what they are doing is also really cool because they are also, you know, making the MI product uh, more of a native uh, cloud uh, solution. So, so I think uh, we have multiple stories right now, but we don't have one story for YAS monitoring. Uh, I think Scrum is probably better for YAS monitoring because of the management pack capabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, but Azure Monitor is the number one and the only uh, product for pass and, and uh, monitoring, and that's where it, it comes from. Uh, so uh, so but but we need to combine these two uh, systems as of today. Uh, but it would be really cool if we could do more on the the YAS uh, uh, monitoring uh, in a single solution, but. Um, but there are some issues with the, with the thinking. For example, the Scrum management pack has a, something called a discovery, as an example. Uh, so we have a lot of the data inside Azure Monitor. We have the the performance data. We have the capacity. Uh, we have the uh, the event data, and uh, you know we have a lot of the data. But and that's why I was thinking: could we do more with with this? Let me ask a quick question to uh, Rod was on the show. I don't know if Brody was there. Rod, how does this line up to the gentleman we had on the show that wrote that SCUM solution? That was Well, I was going to, so I had a discussion with a customer, a large UK customer, can't really talk about too much. <laughs> um, part of, I, I, you're, Morton, Nicholas, you're aware of the TSA, right, for the UK, right? The new telecom, you know. Uh, where there has to be, for redundancy, there has to be an on-prem solution. Customer wants to use Microsoft Sentinel, but there has to be fallback on-prem just in case. Mm -hmm. So we had an individual on, uh, it's about a year ago, I guess, or something, mm -hmm. has written the management pack, the security management pack. So you can actually pull in all the security information from all those devices and things on-prem and it sits in SCOM in that SQL database and then it forwards that stuff to Sentinel, right? So it's mm -hmm. almost using SCOM like a syslog server or whatever, right? Logstash or whatever. Um, so that is still a potential. And I know that we have some federal <clears throat> accounts that use, still use that. So there has to be some kind of interoperability eventually, mm -hmm. to tell you the truth. It just I, has to I think... I could really think of another uh, solution that can also help us, and that is uh, using more machine learning or like, uh, you know, AI for the future so that it will automatically detect and, 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 and understand uh, the normal uh, and when things are deviating from this. Uh, and uh, I, I, I would really love to see more uh, in that uh, space as well. We probably need to introduce them or make a connection, Rod, link them somewhere else right. because there's yeah. there if if I can't remember the gentleman's name, we had him on the show. Nathan his his Nathan, yeah. His solution may be that path that Martin goes, ah, let's see if we can do this and this and that with it. Because now that Martin said that, remind me of the guy is another customer, can't mention their name. They want to write the data to disk first, then send it to Sentinel. Mm -hmm. Right. No fallback. So, All data goes to written the disk. And then once the disk has captured the logs, then the disk then sends it to Sentinel. I could not understand the use case until they got their, their, their folks on and he explained it. And it's just the way their network topology is set up. They have to have that redundancy because they, they almost have, let them say it, zero time differential variance, you know, tolerance. It's close to the time it happens. It has to be written, and then it has to go up there. So that's that may be another solution. Mm. Martin, you just Martin, you just solving all the problems today. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah, no, I mean, we, as a consultant, if you do this lift and shift, I mean, often people they will have Scum installed on their on-prem yeah. VMs, and then when you lift it into Azure, they they sort of want to continue with Scum. Uh, so that's where it's really difficult to come mm -hmm. in and, and pitch the idea of having AMA installed as well or or AMA. Um, because they're super satisfied with SCOM. All the net or the department have been using it for 20 years, right? So it's also like sort of a change management process as well. We need to convert them. Um, <laughs> so it would be good to have, uh, yeah. More so, focus Mark, on it. so yeah. Mark, me and you will write a solution to run Sentinel on Azure Stack. That's what we'll do. 
So, Nikki, Nikki, I'd saying? love to say more. Yeah, yeah, I, I could tell as soon as you guys brought up, but thing, it's like mm -hmm. I can't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, but I will kind of hint one thing. But we we have a tension between lift and shift existing, and in that case, we're looking at like SCOM MI. And they're working on integrations with Azure Monitor to kind of bring that lift and shift forward versus hmm. we're not getting rid. Okay, we're data centers owned by customers are reducing, but computers owned by customers are not. Computing devices are not. Edge is critical. And be that a manufacturing facility, be that, you know, uh, a office facility, like there, there's all these places where we have whole infrastructure we need to monitor and deal with. And so we're investigating solutions there. Um, but some of these, you know, we're looking at, well, what would be the new answer? And we are looking into how can we work with community standards and work with OTEL um, and kind of see, hey, let's allow open ecosystem in edge environment. We're seeing that from a lot of people building from scratch. They don't want a Microsoft specific solution of SCOM or something. Mm -hmm. They want to build it all on OTEL. So we're trying to figure out how we can bring that in um, and help the customers bring OTEL systems. That's awesome are things being built out there by everyone uh, and bring that into the cloud and help manage that for customers. Uh, there's a lot of research going on there. We're working with some big customers trying to understand their needs. Um, mm. And hopefully we'll be announcing some stuff in the future in that space. Here's the thing about that that I want to highlight. Every time I turn around and I, I get feedback from a customer and I go to a product group or a PM, and I say, this is the this is the feedback. They're like, oh, yeah, by the way, we're working on that. We're, we're already yeah, we got that handled. <laughs> yeah. Wait. Put, yeah. A, put, a, put a UAT in. I have. Put another one in. <laughs> no, nobody uses UAT anymore. I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> Straight and proud. There you go. Agile development. Yeah. So I don't quite know the connection between Nick, Martin, and Nicholas. I guess you know you the PM there. Nick, this question is to you. Uh, how, how close do you work with the AMA group? Uh, every day. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was I was wondering. It, it, yours was so. It said PM for data collection rules. I know that you have a program managers yeah. and you have feature without program AMA managers. there is no DCR yeah but no yeah. other way around oh sorry yeah, exactly data there is no this is one of the you know to give some so, hints of where we're going um from the beginning data collection rules were not envisioned as the control system for AMA hmm. it's envisioned as the control system for Azure monitor and AMA, though, was the first thing we wanted to launch. Like, why launch a new thing on an old thing? So we said, okay, AMA and DCR, those are going to go out together. We're going to make them work great side by side. Mm -hmm. But the Morton, most of the work he's doing doesn't involve AMA. Mm -hmm. He's using the direct ingest API that there's no AMA involved. And there's a lot of other scenarios. Uh, actually, anyone, you know, heard the, the latest managed Prometheus mm -hmm. offering that we have? If you go digging into that managed Prometheus offering, you'll look, wait, there's a DCR here. There's actually a DCR being used to direct those Prometheus metrics to the Azure Monitor workspace. Um, so we are looking at everything. If there's any type of data being collected in Azure Monitor, I'm talking with those teams and we're figuring out how it could be done with data collection rules. And in the end, it's going to be, it's the control plane for collecting data in Azure Monitor and a little bit outside of that. Um, we're cooperating with other teams too, um, outside Azure Monitor, um, including getting it to places that aren't Azure Monitor. We know our customers want to send data to other things besides Sentinel and Log Analytics, and we're working on that as well. So all this, um, uh, I also own the PASS diagnostic settings. Mm -hmm. um, and short answer, that thing's going away. Um, it's going to be replaced with data collection rules. But that's not simple because that's integrated with over 100 Azure resource <laughs> providers. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the cool part is the way we did that API, like it's going to be easier than just man one by one by one, but it's still going to be a ton of work. But we're really working on that right now. Similarly, there's a bunch of stuff going on in the metric space. 
you know, we're, we're often talking logs here in the security space, but metrics are also really important signals. And with the Azure Monitor workspace, that metrics workspace happening, we there's a lot of cool things we want to do. And we want to overhaul how custom metrics work, how metrics collection works, how metric exporting works. And all of these things will be based at some point on data collection rules. Uh, when and in what order, we're working on it. But yeah. um, there's a lot of people engaged in this. And uh, I think it's going to be a really cool uh, unified system. It will be complicated, but it will also be really powerful for folks who want to do really cool things. And so we like love mm -hmm. hearing from MVPs like Morton. We're trying to do things. We're like, whoa, OK, OK, <laughs> let's think about <laughs> that. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Well, if it's complicated, Morton will help explain it. We'll be, we'll be <laughs> we're in good hands with Morton. Well, that's I've really learned good. a lot already today. Data collection rules are simultaneously a product. They're a thing that like shows up in the Azure portal that you can go create one and a platform. Sentinel is building really cool stuff with data collection rules where Sentinel takes care of it for you. And so half the things we do are based on partners like Sentinel coming to us and saying, hey, we need this feature for our product. And we go, okay, we're going to do that. But we make sure it's not just for Sentinel. Yeah. Any customer can use it to do things. Um, other half things we look at, we talk to our customer, they go, I don't get what this is doing, or I need to do this thing. And we go, oh, okay, let's add that directly based on customer feedback. But we're simultaneously a product and a platform. And you will see this little bit of challenge or dichotomy of a new feature gets released and there's new UX for it. Like, why is there no UX here? And the answer is, well, because we're trying to enable some really cool thing that's about to go live at Ignite, and they need this new core capability. And there you go. And then we go, OK, now let's go back, think of the UX, and get on that. Right. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Makes okay. sense. Thank you. Good insight, Nick. Good stuff. Well, you, actually, you got me more excited about DCRs. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, so simple question right here. I, this goes back to Nick again. Nick, how many different versions of DCRs are there? Are there two types, three types, one? Is, if I do a DCR via Sentinel or and do one inside Azure, are they the same? Yes. OK, just wondering. Um, there's a thing called a kind in a DCR. And technically, right now, there's like four. Four. Um, but one of them is just no kind. When there's okay. no kind, it's anything goes. Mm -hmm. um, and we're currently talking about a lot of other kinds. But kinds are really just. Uh, help you to scope the schema to get okay. better bounds checking. Mm -hmm. um, but in all cases, they're the same API. They're the same control plane. They're the same capabilities. There's nothing special that someone gets to call that someone else doesn't get to. Very cool. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, I've, also, I've also added uh, a lot of uh, blogs uh, recently. And I hope, uh, Rod, you can link to it uh, yeah. because it will give uh, people some, uh, you know, great uh, details where they can deep dive into AMA and uh, DCR and DC and, and stuff like that. So I'm actually uh, having, I think, 19 blogs uh, on the, the, the Azure Monitor version 2 uh, stuff there. So um, it will, it can hopefully help, uh, you know, getting up to speed about the new features. Mm. Okay. Yeah, uh, be sure to include them in our and, show notes. Absolutely. Yeah, it'll be in the show notes. I have I have the links you sent me. If there's anything that I missed, absolutely send it along because this is I think hugely important. Everybody, everybody that works in Azure, Sentinel, anything within Azure deals with data and data ingestion. So this is yeah, this is huge. Yeah. So more how long is this project? you know, going to be your source of attention and what's the new shiny? I'm sure you're going to finish this out and hand it off and you're going to go, you know, create something else or, or is it super secret? No, I actually, I, I, I do uh, touch base with the product teams, uh, you know, once in a while and, and uh, see how we can, you know, uh, bring in some of the new uh, things that are coming and, and maybe also doing some private previews, testing uh, new things and stuff like that. So uh, so there will be some more things coming uh, uh, soon. Um, and like I was saying, I would love to do, for example, some monitoring. That could be really cool uh, so that we can make sure that data are coming through the pipeline and, and we can see what's going on there. Uh, 
react on it and maybe uh, yeah, in, in incorporate that as a part of the monitoring. Um, we call that on mon monitoring the monitor. Yeah, <laughs> watching exactly. the watchers. Nom -nom. Yeah, mon mon. So, <laughs> but besides that, uh, I'm uh, today I've been working on a on, on a cool new uh, PIM automation uh, module uh, where I'm. Uh, Doing some uh, some cool stuff uh, and uh, uh, like building uh, uh, administrative units, uh, you, you know the RMAU, um, and also uh, the it's based on the enterprise access model. Uh, so it will help uh, replace people that are using the legacy uh, tiering model uh, that they're used to and, and bringing in this uh, new uh, enterprise access model uh, and, and uh, making sure that it works both on their uh, legacy environment and also on their cloud environments. Uh, so it's, uh, and I think um, dealing with that uh, uh, requires some automation so that you can manage all the policies and uh, you know, the eligible and the actual assignments and the renewals uh, of the things that are about to expire and, and stuff like that. So uh, so that's an, another example of a thing that I've been working on uh, today, as a matter of fact. Okay. Cool. Thank you for all you do, Morton. <laughs> You're awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 Morton has given me imposter syndrome. No. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> I don't even know what my job is anymore. I don't, know, you know, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I have no idea. I'm just I'm pretending to you know be this guy in this time. Yeah. Martin, I I I know I'm late to the game, and I don't, I'm going to respect your time. You in a totally crazy time zone, but uh, this is this has been excellent. Yeah, um, it's great. Yeah, That's it's good. you know that when I, you and I started communicating on LinkedIn and everything, we were chatting back and forth, man. And once again, my apologies for being late. Um, bad time management. There you go. So. Okay, nineteenth hole. We got it. Uh, that's fine. Hey, and I want to I want to congratulate Nicholas again for yes why you yeah. chose this show. I have no idea. You're probably second guessing yourself at this point. But yeah, he is. Thanks yeah, yeah. I did all this work. You put me here. Oh. <laughs> popular in Europe, I guess. Who knew? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah all right. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a it was a chance to talk to Morton, right? You know. Yeah, yeah there you go. Just us. Yeah, that's <laughs> two days in the thing. same show. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. What are the what are the chances? The I, I wouldn't I wouldn't fun. doubt you guys are just in separate rooms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a small country. Separate rooms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Mike, yeah. thanks for joining us as well. Really yeah. great insight. Good content. I really appreciate also you joining Nick. Uh, thank yeah. you for doing that. I really appreciate. I know you're really busy. But, uh, well, we know really who to bug have... now. We know. Oh who yeah. Oh, he should have put his title in there. I got. Him, I got. It, I got a pin in now. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, people are gonna find me on LinkedIn, and oh, I think I already got some people. <laughs> there you <laughs> yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just tell us what you're announcing at Ignite uh, early. We'll, we'll be friends, okay? That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so my, my days are literally just trying to talk to everyone in Azure Monitor just to keep on the same page. There's mm. there's so much going on, and we need to all make sure it makes sense together. Um, so I'm just yeah. meeting to meeting to meeting, talking to people and trying to understand what's going on and tell tell them what we're trying to do and make sure it can all fit together. Yeah. Well, one of the funny things I think would be if Nick told us what his group is announcing at Ignite, it would give an indication of what everybody else is announcing at Ignite. So <laughs> don't do <laughs> it. Super secret <laughs> sauce. No, don't let Rod get you in trouble, man. No, it's, yeah. I also want to give credit to uh, to Ivan and uh, Evgeny who couldn't join us today. Yeah. So uh, they're on. I know Ivan is on vacation right now uh, because of Fourth of July vacation. But uh, he's uh, they're running the uh, you know owning the, this uh, from from a pipeline perspective. So they're the the pipeline guys. So uh, and they've been really tremendous as, to work with as well. So uh, so it's been really close to. Uh, you know, working together with Nick and and the other guys there. So it's cool. I really appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, they're they're both on vacation right now, actually. And uh, but yeah, they're they're handling the data side. I'm handling the control side. But they're the ones making the cool KQL stuff work and everything. So they they've they're really great people to work with, and they've I helped out Morton quite a bit on this. Well, everyone, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, yeah. Thanks to the Thank listeners, law subscribers, and everything. Um, 
Martin, you always welcome back. You know, I would say come back anytime you have something cool, but that would be like tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like the next day, you'll be right there, right? So after the show, yeah. yeah. Nicholas, thanks for choosing our show as your your you know your prize. Yeah. And thanks, Mr. Kelsey. Finally, good to meet you, Nick, uh, for the first time. I think I've seen your name. I'm in the AMA chat. Here we go. Yeah. Everett's met everybody before. They kicked me out of the chat. Yeah. <laughs> they kicked me out. They kicked me out. A troublemaker. They, so that's how I know him. Everybody, don't forget, no show next week. We come back in two weeks with John O'Neill, and this was a audience suggestion for a topic. We're talking about cyber insurance. Nice. Nice. I'm glad you told me there was no show next week. I would have just showed up. <laughs> yeah, I wish you had an Andrew would have just showed up by herself. Yeah, I'm just with Team Canada over here. Yeah. <laughs> we, just, we just kept telling her, we're coming. Stay on the show. We'll be there. Yeah, in a yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be there soon. Yeah, we'll be there the soon. Lobby. You'll stay on the show. Yeah. 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 Well, everyone, thank you, everyone. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Thank you. Have a great week. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Have a good